Welcome to part four of this video series on frequency response analysis in which we're going to show you how to make the measurement of the loop of a switching power supply. We've already shown you so far how it's very important that we overcome the noise in the switching power supply and we cover the proper frequency range to characterize the loop properly. Now let's have a look at how we inject the signal into the loop itself. Here we have our switching power supply, input voltage and load resistance. And what we want to do with this switching power supply is actually close a feedback loop around it. So let's do that. And here is our PWM controller. It doesn't really matter whether this is an analog controller, a digital controller. It can be an op-amp integration, uh, uh, integration network, or it could be a digital implementation of that, followed by a comparator or a processor. That gives us the duty cycle to our power supply. And then here is the feedback loop around the system. So here we have a block diagram of our switching power supply, right in here. See the input voltage with either rectified AC or DC, and the load resistor. And we all know we have to take feedback from the output of this back through to the input in order to regulate the output properly. So let's add that feedback loop now. And there it is. So we take a sample of the output voltage, compare it to a reference, put it through an error amplifier. That goes through the PWM comparator and generates the gate drive to our control fed of the system. What we've created now is a feedback loop around the system and these power converters can be quite complicated. So the first thing we have to do is measure exactly what it is that we have for a loop gate in the system. And we do that in an interesting way. We don't actually open up the loop but we insert a resistor in the loop. And the purpose of this is to keep the loop gate closed for regulation purposes so the power supply is operating at the correct point but to be able to measure the input and output across this resistor to see what the loop gain is. So now we add our favorite frequency response analyzer, the AP300, and we need a transformer to take the source and inject it differentially across this resistor. So we take the source signal, put it into the transformer input, and then that comes across the 20 ohm resistor, and this gives a difference in voltage between these two at only one frequency. So what we're actually doing here is breaking the loop just at one injection frequency and it's kept closed at all other frequencies and that's how we manage to regulate while measuring the open loop of the system. Now we put a couple of probes on the circuit. One measures the input voltage to the loop, goes in here, and the other one measures the output voltage from the loop that goes over there. And now we're going to start sending a swept signal from the source across the resistor and measure the ratio and gain and phase of those two signals. So here we have our switching power supply test set up. This is the switching power supply, which actually comes from our design workshop. Input power, bias power, load power, going over to our adjustable load bank here where we can turn resistors on and off to load differently the power supply. Here we have our AP300 frequency response analyzer. The source output comes from here and goes into this extremely wideband injection isolator, which is transformer isolated and works from 0.1 Hz to 30 MHz. Now we're going to take the signal from this injection isolator and apply it across the loop resistor in our switching power supply. So what we're going to do now is take the output of this injection isolator and we're going to tie it across these two test pins here, which are on either side of the injection resistor in the feedback loop of the power supply. And I do recommend that you put that uh, test resistor in your feedback loop when you're doing your board layouts because adding it in afterwards can be quite difficult with some of the highly densely packed converters that people build these days. So now we've got our injected signal going into the power supply. So we're going to hook up the test signals, the test channels on either side of that resistor. So this one here is going to the output of the loop gain and then we're going to connect the other test cable to the input of the loop gain. And the ratio of those two signals will give us the gain of the system. Okay, so now we're ready to start measuring our switching power supply loop gain. Notice we're going to start the sweep at 10 Hz. The first decade from 10 Hz to 100 Hz is very important because that's where you capture the gain at the line frequency, 50 Hz, 60 Hz, and the harmonics will come afterwards and sweep all the way out to 200 kilohertz in this case and that's for a 100 kilohertz switcher and that's just because I like to capture the switching frequency on the loop gain plot. So let's start the sweep 
and this is actually a current mode controlled converter and you can see down at 10 Hertz the gain is uh, quite high it's above 80 dB tremendous amount of gain and even though there's a lot of gain and a huge amount of noise in the system you can see that the AP300 has no problems picking out the signal from the noise and right now it's 40 Hertz, 50 Hertz, a little bit of a blip in the gain in the phase there because of the line frequency noise injected into the system and it starts to sweep quite quickly after 100 Hertz and after 1 kilohertz, you may actually be able to hear it. Those of you with good ears will hear that climbing frequency there. And that actually is the magnetics of the power supply vibrating. And um, that can often be quite a problem in some production power supplies. You don't want to hear your power supplies, but during the loop gain measurement itself, you, you should expect to hear that noise, and that tells you that everything is being ejected properly. And we can see our crossover frequency right around here at uh, 0 dB is right here. Let's turn on some cursors on the analyzer and we'll ask this cursor to go find the crossover frequency and there it is right there and you can see we've got 0 dB of gain with 7.7 .7 kilohertz crossover frequency and 78 or 80 degrees of phase margin. So that's a pretty good rugged loop for our switching power supply. So now you've seen how we measure the loop gain of a high gain switching power supply using, in this case, current mode control. And the AP300 was able to extract very high gains of the system down below 100 Hz and give a very clean signal. If you'd like more information on making measurements like this, please visit our design center at RidleyEngineering.com and you can also look at our analyzer page where there's a bunch of application notes on how to measure frequency response analysis for power supplies. Thank you.